Hello tarot people! Tracy here with an unboxing of sorts. I, uh, well first, I got this little book. I picked this up off of Amazon. It goes with the Dame Fortune's Wheel Tarot. It's a pictorial key. And I've had this deck for a while and have, have never used it. And always wanted to, but thought it was maybe a little, um, I don't know, esoteric. And it turns out it's actually not. Um, they took the Atella, I think is how you pronounce it, tarot, and have basically created a deck based on his tarot, and it's all pre-Golden Dawn stuff. So it's sort of like in between the Marseille and when the Golden Dawn got a hold of it and put a whole bunch of their associations with it. And so this little book was, I don't know, $12, $14, something like that. So I picked it up, and I'm going to see if I don't use it now because I do love the images and it is sort of a the images on that deck are sort of a a melding between a modern deck and a and a Marseille style deck so anyway that's kind of beside the point I ordered a package from a witchy shop in Omaha Nebraska called Next Millennium and their website address is actually MagicalOmaha.com because I wanted the Artist's Inner Vision Tarot. Uh, I saw, and I'm so sorry, I can't remember who. Well, I remember who, but I can't remember your channel name. I can see your face as plain as day. But I saw someone doing, uh, showing this deck and talking about the the guidebook and that sort of thing. And I was intrigued. I had seen it around, but I wasn't, you know, I just wasn't that interested until she started talking about what was in the book, and then I got interested. Unfortunately, it's no longer available from the artist's Etsy shop, but this this store in Omaha had some copies, and since I was ordering from them, it's a witch shop, I could get lots of other things, I ordered some other things as well. And one of the things I really liked that they talked about on their website, you see, this isn't, this box isn't probably the best box you've ever seen. They actually reuse boxes that they get. So when they get stuff shipped to them, they will reuse those boxes to ship out things to their customers. And I really liked that. Uh, so I ordered that deck and a few other little things like maybe some crystals to add to my collection, to add to my prompts for my Gems of Tarot on Instagram. I'm going to show the Artist's Center Vision deck, but I also wanted to see how they package things, what kind of quality they would send, and let other people know about this shop. If um, They had a lot of Etsy decks on this shop, shop. They had a lot of independently published decks that are U.S. decks that you can get on Etsy, but if you wanted a couple of them and they come from different artists and you didn't want to pay double shipping, it might be worth a shot. Well, we do have a whole pile of packing peanuts. So I think I'm going to pause the video and come back when I have gotten rid of the packing peanuts. Okay, so it was easier to get the stuff out of the box than it was to get the packing peanuts out of the box. So I just took the stuff out of the box. But first of all, they sent a card and it says, also, Tracy, You'll be refunded for the Peach Moonstone, we're out. Which I knew because they sent me an email like a day ago. And that's not a big deal. But we did send you a cabochon, uh, I think that says cabochon, of Peach Moonstone. <laughs> Enjoy. And then also we were out of the small Nog Champa candles, so we gave you a large one. So yes, I would absolutely, based on what I've seen so far, I would absolutely recommend um, this shop and I will put a link to the shop in the in the little bar in the description box below so if you have any sort of witchy needs it took you know they shipped stuff out I think I ordered on Wednesday and I got the stuff on Saturday and they sent a little I'm assuming that's some sort of a little casting charm it says grow awesome on one side and then has a little acorn with a triquetra in it. It's just lovely. So yes, the next millennium in Omaha, Nebraska. 
very cool, very cool witchy shop. I ordered, a, yes, I ordered a Nog Champa candle because I have gotten, in the past few months, I have gotten to where I cannot stand incense smoke anymore. And I was always very picky about the incense that I liked anyway. And I've actually been looking for incense scented candles so that I could have my incense without having to have the smoke. And yeah, there's, there's just a difference between a little bit of smoke when I blow out a candle and the smoke from incense. And that absolutely smells like Nag Champa. Oh, that's lovely. So I will give this a try. It seems to be quite highly scented. I'm gonna have to find something to put it on because all my candles are in jars. Huh. But I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna like that. And then I got some crystals because they were all in the, I think I paid two to five dollars for each one. show these. This is a piece of sardonyx. Wow. It's really pretty. I'm going to keep them in their little named bags for the time being. This, this I was so interested in, which is in the onyx family as well. This is called Galactic Onyx. And if you know anything about Onyx, you know that most Onyx is in the green and brown family. And the black Onyx that you find in jewelry is generally dyed. And this is not. So that's really interesting. And those are bigger pieces than I kind of expected. Let's see. We've got the, my golden yellow topaz and a, a small peach moonstone cabochon. So apparently I needed a piece of peach moonstone so much that they got me, gave me a little cabochon of peach moonstone, which I could actually put in a piece of jewelry. And then this yellow topaz. Oh God, that's gorgeous. Yeah, that cabochon. We do, I might hold it until November when we have our gem show, our local gem show. And they have jewelers that come with the gem show and you can buy loose settings and they'll put your stones in the settings. I like, I've always wanted a piece of Iolite. This one's fairly small, but it is, it's Iolite. I got one more in here. They were very well packaged. Yes, I got a piece of crazy lace agate. Really cool. And that's all of the crystals. Now for the tarot deck. They packaged everything really, really well. Lots of bubble wrap. Okay, I'm going to pause again until I get this out of the bubble wrap. Well, I took it out of the bubble wrap and I took the plastic off of the outside of the box. And this is the artist's inner vision tarot. It is a collaborative deck. I don't think I'll be keeping this box. It's not quite sturdy enough for storage, but we'll see. Here is the book. And then the deck is, let me 
have it in a little bag. The bag is lovely. As much as I dislike drawstring bags, it's a very lovely one. It goes very well from what I understand with the colors. I used to think I didn't like collage decks. I have since come to discover that I actually do like collage decks and I make no apologies for it anymore. I, it, I like a good collage deck. Uh, collage art is like any other art. You really have to be skilled to make good collage art. The same way you have to be skilled to make any other kind of good art. And we will see how this one looks. Cardstock is acceptable. Uh, it's not the best. It's not the worst. It's actually pretty good. It, you know, I like to, to riffle shuffle, so I like my cardstock bendy. So I think it's going to do pretty well. We have the Fool. Magician. Okay, so some of it looks like it's collage and some of it looks like it's not. So like the fool is definitely collage, but that looks like a painting. And that one looks like a painting. Let's see what we can find out about these artists. It lists all the artists, the illustrators in the beginning. Wow, this is copyright 1999. I didn't realize this one had been out that long. A group of male artists, M-A-I-L, not M-A-L-E, joined on the common ground of making art and sharing it through Kapol and Art Swap, created an internet group as well. Through chattering, through chatting, and the sharing of various interests, friendships were made, and several deck projects evolved from this group. First was the playing card deck, where each participant was assigned two cards to illustrate. Then came the fortune telling deck, where each participant created two fortunes and illustrated them. The third was a tarot deck. At this time, there was some small talk about turning the deck into a commercial deck and publishing it. However, the idea was discarded by the group at the time. Capilan, Capilan Mail Art Swap but 10% of the profits of this deck go back to Mult Mutt Matchers, a nonprofit agency that places unwanted pets. Each of the 26 artists involved in this col collaboration created three tarot cards and three rubber stamp images to decorate the book. Okay. This book is very basic and is structured not only to define basic card interpretations, but also to make comparisons to movies and television shows to illustrate the cards, themes, and concepts, and aid users in remembering the meanings and making them easier to relate to. That's what interested me about the book, was talking about movies and TV shows. Because I am not really good at relating tarot to everyday life, and any time I can get any help relating tarot to everyday life, I'm going to jump on that. Okay, let's continue. That's the Empress. The Emperor, the Hierophant, that's collage. The Lovers, the Chariot, Justice. These are very interesting. The Hermit, the theory of spontaneous solitude is practiced throughout the Eastern Himalayas by wandering hermits intent on finding inner solitude. I, yeah, and then after that, I'm not sure what it says. Wheel of Fortune. Strength. The Hanged One. I saw something completely different. Death. I think that's Waterhouse. Temperance. My brain is just in a really weird place because I saw the Muppets. The Devil. I like that. I would love to have a deck illustrated just by this artist. The Tower. 
star. Moon. Sun. Judgment. The world. Six of Cups. The Two of Cups. Three of Cups. Four of Cups. Five of Cups. Six of Cups. Seven of Cups. A lot of these seem a little busy. I'll see how that works out. Could just be the angle that I'm looking at them because the light is just so horrible. <clears throat> I'm getting a I'm getting a glare trying to make sure that there's not a glare on the camera. Yeah, I'm sad that the book doesn't talk about the art that went into the the cards. I'd love to know why they picked certain things. I always love to know that. Yeah, sometimes I think it's going to be hard to tell which card you're looking at because this one as far yeah there it is it's sideways and it's kind of hard to see and she looks rather appalled and he's kind of blue these are swords Interesting. Yeah, that artist is definitely my favorite. Like we have princes and princesses instead of pages and knights. And then the coins. Hmm, I like that, how that fits together. And that's been made so that it's the same upside down as right side up. So you really, other than the back, <laughs> you do know which way's up. Coins. Coins. Prince of Coins. Interesting with the Princess outranks the prince, in, in my mind, just because they're in that order. Very interesting. Very interesting. Let's see. Size-wise, they seem to be pretty much standard tarot size. Here's the Sassy Burrito. Oh, they're actually a little bigger. They are just a teeny tiny bit taller and 
a little bit wider than my sassy burrito. And let's try to give them a shuffle and see how they shuffle. They feel really good. I know that, that it's hard to describe what makes a deck feel good in your hands. Oh, wow, yeah. These are really good shufflers. They're just bendy enough. When you take a single card and bend it, it's really easy to do. But when you start doing a whole deck, this is, this I would think is pretty close to perfect when it comes to cardstock, in my opinion. Because of the way I shuffle. And the size is really nice. I have large hands. Let's take it this way, yeah. We're just doing this let's pull a card for everybody let's see what do what message do we need to hear and then I'll read from the book oh eight of swords eight of swords eight of swords this card characterizes the expression between a rock and a hard place there's a feeling of being trapped being a victim of circumstance in a situation where one is restricted in some way Yet, despite its negativity, the Eight of Swords, besides being a card of restriction and inner turmoil, is also a card that promises eventual liberation. In this card, we see a sleeping individual lying in a cramped fetal position. Well, actually, they do describe the cards, so yay, thumbs up there. A position of retreat and reluctant defeat, representing the feeling of entrapment and frozen conflict. Yet within the sleeper's dreams, we see him or her walking a tightrope above those swords of conflict and entrapment, leaving them behind. The Eight of Swords informs us that although one is trapped in a situation, restricted in some way, there is hope. There will be a new beginning, a choice that will relieve the restriction. A door will open for escape from the difficult situation. The negative of this card would mean seeing... <clears throat> The negative of this card would mean seeing the situation clearly for the first time for what it is, and after becoming mentally clear, taking a first step towards liberation. I think they really mean reversal, because I don't see that as a negative at all. A movie which illustrates the Eight of Swords is No Way Out, where a character is trapped, framed for a crime he hasn't committed, and must prove his innocence. Another movie with that same Eight of Swords scenario is The Fugitive. So there you go, the artist's inner vision tarot. Um, I think it's a very interesting deck. It, right off the bat, I'm not 100% sure it's going to gel with me, but I really think I do like it. And I think it's going to be interesting to, to give it a whirl and, and work with it. Thank you all for putting up with me and watching this. I hope you have a marvelous, marvelous day.